ask you a question. Do you have a photographic memory? I don't know, you know, I just kind of remember. Meet Will Hunting. In South Boston, he's already a legend. Assault, mayhem, theft, resisting, all overturned. But when you hit an officer, you go in. I've spoken to the judge, and he's agreed to release you. Really? You have to meet with me and a therapist every week. This boy's genius is unparalleled. I've never seen anything like it. Now, I need someone who can get through to him. Like me. For the first time in his life. It's a poker game with this kid. Any vulnerability he senses will exploit. Will Hunting is about to meet his match. Did you paint that? Yeah, I painted it. Very interesting. Well, maybe you're in the middle of a storm. You know, the waves are crashing over your tiny little boat there. And maybe you did what you had to do to get out. Maybe you became a psychologist. You got me. And maybe you married the wrong woman. Maybe you should watch your mouth. Nobody can understand you, right, Will? You're a genius. I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some book. Unless you want to talk about you. Are you terrified of what you might say? You're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. You got something none of us have. Oh, come on. Why is it always this? I mean, I owe it to myself. You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to me. Because I'd do anything to have what you got. So would any of these guys. He's perfect right now, and I don't want to ruin that. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. That way you can go through your entire life without ever having to really know anybody. I love you. You ever think about getting remarried? My wife's dead. Hence the word remarried. My wife's dead. Well, I think that's a super philosophy, Sean. I mean, that way you could actually go through the rest of your life without ever really knowing anybody. Robin Williams. Matt Damon. Ben Affleck, Stellan Skarsgård, and Minnie Driver. Good Will Hunting. It's our mission here to rigorously and ruthlessly train the humanity out of you and make you into something better. We're going to make doctors out of you. Well, I just believe there's more to being a doctor than memorizing facts about the ventricular arteries. I don't care what you think. I care about my biology test. We're not even going to see a patient until the third year. If you want to become a doctor, we have to learn to treat the patient as well as the disease. That's why we have to dive into people. <laughs> you have a brilliant mind, and like many brilliant people, you don't necessarily think the rules apply to you. It was so much more convenient thinking of you as an idiot. That little ice that just chipped off. If you want to be a clown, go join the circus. For your own sake, I think you should just lay low for a while. The hospital will cover all of your bills. Any other questions? <laughs> Patients are opening up to me, Corinne. They're sharing their dreams, their fantasies. <laughs> they don't concentrate on the pain. I'm warning you, stay out of this hospital. What if a doctor becomes emotionally involved with a patient? What is wrong with that? Patients don't need a friend, they need a doctor. My name is Dr. Phil. <laughs> I'll be your surgeon. Oh, there you are. You are dismissed, sir, from this school. They can't prevent me from graduating because of a personality clash, can they? Universal Pictures presents... You are not cut out to be a physician. Our job is improving the quality of life, not just delaying death. The true story... Uh -huh of a man who broke every rule. Why am I such a threat to you, sir? Because what you want is for us to get down there on the same level as our patients. And prove that laughter. Donner, party of 50. Donner, party over here. Truly is the best medicine. Close, Robin Williams. You treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you win, no matter what the outcome. Patch Adams. marriage is ending. My marriage is not ending. It's just on hiatus. To put his family back together, Daniel Hillard needed a job. Do you have any special skills? I do voices. Yes! Nancy and I are still looking for the other half of my head. Look at me right now, Money Penny. I want to undo that bow and get to know you. Mr. Hillard, do you consider yourself humorous? I used to. And a decent home for his kids. How do you like it? Can't you just tell Mom you're sorry? But he found a way. I'm placing an ad for a housekeeper. Housekeeper? Could you make me a woman? To have both. Wow. Let's pray. Hello? 
Euphigenia Doubtfire. Papa's got a brand new bag. <laughs> the terrorists, they ran that way. It was a run by fruiting. This holiday season. Surprise. Robin Williams. Mm. Sally Field. Who needs a husband when I've got you? In a Chris Columbus film. Back off! Mrs. Doubtfire. Got a top in here. A father's work. Is never done. Oh, first he is a woman. I'm getting hot flashes. Now, Mr. Pitts. It's a rather unfortunate name. Mr. Pitts. <laughs> Where are you? Mr. Pitts, will you open your hymnal to page 542? Read the first stanza of the poem you find there. the virgins to make much of time? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> Somewhat appropriate, isn't it? <laughs> Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. Thank you, Mr. Pitts. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. The Latin term for that sentiment is carpe diem. Now, who knows what that means? <laughs> carpe diem. That seized the day. Very good, Mr. Meeks. Meeks. Another unusual name. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Why does the writer use these lines? Because he's in a hurry. No. Ding! Thank you for playing anyway. Because we are food for worms, lads. Because believe it or not, each and every one of us in this room is one day going to stop breathing. Turn cold and die. I'd like you to step forward over here and peruse some of the faces from the past. You've walked past them many times. I don't think you've really looked at them. They're not that different from you, are they? Same haircuts, full of hormones, just like you. Invincible, just like you feel. The world is their oyster. They believe they're destined for great things, just like many of you. Their eyes are full of hope, just like you. Did they wait until it was too late to make from their lives even one iota of what they were capable? Because you see, gentlemen, these boys are now fertilizing daffodils. But if you listen real close, you can hear them whisper their legacy to you. Go on, lean in. Listen. Good. <clears throat>